Shopping for an RV? Don't get ripped off. Today, I interview a former salesman. Walk away. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. I have been RVing since the 80s and I have been doing videos about the RV industry. Today, I interview Stick Bogart. He is much more than a former salesman because now he works as a consumer advocate by being an RV expert witness. Stay tuned as I'll have an upcoming video about that. One of the things that really bothers me is when somebody goes out to buy an RV, they show excitement. They're so happy that they found the one that they want. They should never show excitement when they go to buy something because it's you're going to wind up paying more. You know, when I sold cars for a living, the dealership said, learn how to read the customer. If they show excitement, it's exactly the one they want. We can take more of their money because they're tired of looking. They found what they want. If you act like you don't want it, the price will go down. People have to think about something. When you go to a new car dealership and you look at the window sticker, that shows the manufacturer's sticker. That falls under the Senator Mike Monroney law. Back in 1958, Senator Mike Monroney got that bill passed and it became law for passenger vehicles. It does not apply to RVs. If a customer goes to an RV dealer and they look at the window sticker, nine times out of 10, it's all fabricated crap. If they were to take a picture of that and then take a picture of the VIN number, and they decide to go to an RV show and sell, like at a football stadium or something like that, I guarantee you the price at the show will be a lot more money. That way they can give you that big discount. Go to these RV show and sales, but listen to me. If I owned an RV company and I was going to bring some coaches to an RV show and sale, I'm going to cherry pick who at my dealership is going to attend that show as a sales rep. I need to capitalize off of how much money I spent to have all these coaches transferred over there by all these drivers, bringing them over there. So I have to have the salespeople that are real sharks to close every deal possible. I'm not going to have my salespeople that are just starting shipping them over to the RV show and sale. I want the sharks that have the ability to close the deal today. When a customer says, I want to think about it, as a sales rep, you got to overcome those. What, what do you need to think about putting on more pressure? That Most people don't know when you go there, you're dealing with somebody that's very experienced about closing deals. Even if you don't want to do it today, most customers, when they go to a car dealership or an RV show, hi, my name is such and such. I'm from such and such. How can I help you? Uh, what are you looking for? Oh, I'm looking to do this. Well, I need to think about it. What's there to think about? We've got exactly what you want right now. Let me show you and walk you right to it and walk you into the sales process, even if you're not ready to buy. I challenge you to go to an RV show, just tell them you're looking for a coach, you're not sure what you want, and watch how much pressure they put on you to buy now. Customers have to walk away from that. When I sold cars for a living, if a customer came on the lot because I was selling cars at the time, I'm going to close a deal. Because if I don't close the deal and they leave, nine times out of ten, they're not coming back. They're going to go to a dealership that's got a salesman that's stronger than me that pushed them into the deal because I didn't. You just say, well, I don't know that's going to fit. I'm going to have to take some measurements of, even if you don't have an RV garage, just say, I need to take some measurements in my RV garage to make sure it will fit. I'm not ready to do anything right now. Any good legitimate excuse. And some of them will say, well, let us tow it over there and see if we can do it. We can do that today. It's about closing the deal. Consider me a consumer advocate. I don't want people getting ripped off. And you know, you've talked to people yourself. You hear their excitement and you hear the sadness of what they've gone through. Do your homework. What kind of vehicle are you going to be using to pull it with if you're going to buy a trailer? Are you going to buy a Class A, a Mini? Those are things people need to think about. What kind of insurance you're going to pay for that coach? Where are you going to park it if your HOA won't allow you to park it at your house? And how much is that going to cost? That's more money out of your pocket. You have to think about owning it, storing it, and maintaining it, and insuring it. A well, guy that lived across the street from me bought a small single axle travel trailer to pull behind his Ford Explorer. He was so happy he came over and told me about it. And I went over and looked at it. I didn't want to depress the guy. I, I looked at it. Visually, everything, it looked great. And uh, I said, wait a minute. Does it have brakes on the trailer? He says, yeah. Electric brakes? Yeah. I says, no, you don't have electric brakes. They're not working. How do you know? Because there's no wires going from your brake system electrically activating the brakes on the wheels. That thing is going to be pushing your truck down the hill. 
So he had to take it back. I've caught people selling customers trailers that are 25%, 50% more weight than the towing vehicle has the capabilities. It's way beyond that. Sometimes the salesman will sell you something and they don't care whether you're too heavy for your towing vehicle. The customer has to do some homework. How much does my vehicle weigh? What's the, the tongue weight that my truck can pull? Because the more tongue weight you put on it, you lose braking capability on the front axle of your towing vehicle and your steering capability, especially in the snow. If it doesn't work, don't move forward with it anyways. There are some states that have a three-day cooling off period. The consumer needs to know if they have a three-day cooling off period or not because once you sign the dotted line and you bounce the curb, it's yours. They want the money and forget you. Years ago, they didn't have the arbitration clause in contracts. A lot of car dealerships here in the Valley have a lot of lawsuits against them, even the RV dealerships. Then they decided, okay, we got to find a way to get away from these lawsuits. So what they do is they put an arbitration clause in the contract. If you see arbitration in the contract, walk away. What the arbitration clause is, everybody, please listen to me. The arbitration clause is basically so that when you go to hire an attorney, because you want to sue that dealership, all they got to do is say, well, we got an arbitration clause. We're going to be able to circumvent the court. You're not going to get in front of a judge and a jury. You're going to go to an arbitrator and the arbitrator nine times out of 10 is going to rule in favor of the business because that's where they get their business. The consumer, as a consumer, you don't provide the arbitrator any business. Nine times out of 10, they're going to rule in favor of the business that you bought your vehicle from. So if there's an arbitration clause, walk away. They created that to circumvent the court and win pretty much every time. Now, if you're buying a new RV, you may not realize it, but you'll also need to buy a new mattress. I have seen RVs going up to even four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000, where the mattress is total crap. I'm talking like glorified cardboard. In fact, when I bought my brand new Grand Design 260RD fifth wheel, I cratered the new mattress in three and a half weeks. I can't believe how crappy some of these new mattresses can be, even in new RVs. And of course, if you're buying used, you probably want to get a new mattress as well. Well, for the last year and a half, I have been sleeping on an RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. It is so comfortable. It has never cratered. It is just unbelievably soft. One of the things that I learned through Brooklyn Bedding is in my entire adult life, I have been sleeping on a firm mattress. Well, I learned from them that due to my body size and my sleeping style, I actually should be sleeping on a soft. Now, now I wake up pain-free, no aches and pains. I used to wake up and my hips and my shoulders would hurt. Well, I really love my mattress and I love how easy it is to get one if you're an RVer. RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding will ship directly to you, to your campground, to your door, whatever. These mattresses come rolled up in a box. Now they are heavy, so you've got to probably get some help. My mattress weighed about 100 pounds, so you might wanna get some help getting it in the door. And you might need someone to help you unroll it, but then it's kind of fun to watch it puff up. The mattress can be slept on that night and it comes with a 10 year warranty. Also, there's a 120 night sleep trial and there's even free shipping. If you're interested in an RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding, don't pay full price. I can get you 25% off. Just go to rvmattress.com slash Liz Amazing, put in the coupon code Liz Amazing and you'll get 25% off. So if you're listening to me and you're thinking about buying that vehicle, an RV or whatever, ask the salesman, hey, me and my husband are going to go outside. We're going to sit and talk and we're going to go through the documents before we sign anything. See, Americans are more emotionally attached to what they want than their money. OK, it's true. As long as they get their dream in their driveway and they can afford the payment, they're OK with it. But later on, when something goes wrong and they read the contract or somebody says, well, we can't do that. Look at your contract. Well, I didn't agree to 17 percent interest. Yes, you did, because you signed the contract. I tell people, read the contract before you sign it. All the documents. The RV industry has gotten a bad rep because of their assembly process. When it's hand built and it's fast, it might be crappy. But when it's built fast on an assembly line with robots precisionly doing everything every time, because they're all the same, all F-150s, they might have some different features, but the frame and the cab, all those are the same. 
They don't have those problems that the RV does. And cranking them out and delivering them all over the place, not caring. And God only knows what's going to happen to the RV that's being pulled from the manufacturer and delivered to the dealer. What kind of crappy roads and everything else that they've taken that thing down. That's when they should do the RV inspection, the pre-deliver inspection, right at the dealership when they first get it to double check. We're saving our reputation. They would rather pay a technician to repair your coach than to pre-delivery inspect the coach before they sell it to you. Most customers will not pay for the inspection because a sales dealership might say, well, we've already inspected it, okay? Where's the documents? And you say, well, where's the LP gas system test? Don't even say that. You say, let me see the documents. People are willing to pay for an inspection for the most part on the house that they're wanting to buy. But sometimes they're so emotionally attached to spending money on things that are fun, they're not willing to spend money on things that are safe. Somebody trying to sell you an extended warranty, wait a minute, and they'll try to sell you an extra spare tire. You've already got one, it's given to you. My pickup truck I just bought is the 2022 Nissan Frontier. I bought it brand new. They tried to sell me an extended warranty. I said, no, I don't need one. It's got three-year 36 bumper to bumper, five-year 60,000 pounds trip. Why have two of them on your plate? Why have two steaks on your plate? You can only eat one at a time anyways. Use the one you got. You can go to any RV dealership after your warranty is getting ready to expire, and they will sell you an extended warranty. But read the disclaimers. Find out what it does not and does cover. Have you ever heard of these car warranty companies on TV talking about selling you a warranty that will cover all your repairs. They never show you a complete bullet list in their website of everything that they don't cover and why they don't cover it. They just give you a general topic list, but then the loopholes are underneath of the general topic list, but you don't get to see that. I don't like extended warranties because they got too many loopholes in them to not pay out the deal. And then some of those extended warranty companies, you see them on TV, they got famous people to attract your attention to listen to what they have to say. Why do they have to do that? To get you emotionally attached to that company because you like that famous star on TV. I'm skeptical about buying an extended warranty. Who knows what happens when you decide, I've had too many problems with this coach, I'm going to sell it. Are you going to get your money back on that extended warranty that you, have, that you purchased for the coach? No, buy it later. Be careful. If you're going to buy a used RV and there's no warranty, yeah, you might want to look at buying one. Go to review sites and read the complaints that these people are posting. Do you want your boots in that mud? Most people probably don't. I'm a mechanically inclined person. I can fix just about anything. My truck is loaded with tools. I know what I'm doing. If you're not mechanically inclined, you have to do your due diligence as which warranty company you're going to pay for. Relying on a good technician when you have your coach repaired and building rapport with that person if it's in your city where you're at. If you're going to buy a coach like a Class A or a, a Mini, make sure it's got an American drive line. It's got an American chassis. It's got an American engine, an American transmission. Let's say it's a Ford. It's a Ford drive line. You can go to the Ford dealership and get brake pads if you want to put them on yourself or they'll put them on for you because they're familiar with that chassis. If you buy something foreign from overseas, how long are they going to wait to get the parts? We've already got problems with uh, supply chain. Do your homework of how often are you going to be traveling? Are you going to live in it full time? Or are you going to do it once in a, two or three times a year? How much money are you willing to spend to use it for the time you're going to use it every year? Don't go with emotions. Emotions will always cost you more money. What kind of insurance is it going to cost me? Where's my storage place going to be? And get familiar with the cost of owning one of these things before you go make that financial commitment that you're locked into. In an upcoming video, Stick will share stories of being an expert witness working with attorneys going against the RV manufacturers. So be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And let me know any sales stories that you may have, good and bad, in the comments. As always, if RV life is calling you, I hope you come out here and give it a try.